And then it was the Andrews Raid. So here's the general in uh, this museum here today. And this is the Texas, which is down in the Atlanta Cyclorama. Someday, perhaps, the two will be joined together. But these were the two most famous locomotives involved, although not the only ones. On April 12, 1862, 20 Union spies led by a civilian named James J. Andrews seized the Confederate locomotive called the General, and they seized it right out here at a place called the Lacey Hotel. This is a drawing of the Lacey Hotel from 1887. Probably looked about like that. If any of you have ever gone hiking up at Alatoona Pass, and there's a little parking lot there to go into the pass, on your left is a, a house. And uh, local lore says the uh, Lacey Hotel in Big Shanty was built on the same plan as that house. And you can see this actually looks a bit like that house uh, up in Alatoona. So why'd they steal this train and, and uh, what were they going to do with it? Well, they stole it in Big Shanty where that Lacey Hotel was. The train had stopped for a 20-minute breakfast break uh, at the Lacey Hotel. So where was the Lacey Hotel? So Dr. Betty Smith did an archaeological study trying to find the foundations of the Lacey Hotel. Uh, this was 1997, 1998. They used ground penetrating radar and of course found that the foundations were buried under the parking lot of the depot. So it was not in an easily accessible place, but they, they found the, the two wells and, and they could faintly see the foundations. Lacey Hotel was burned to the ground in 1864 by Sherman's troops and uh, was never rebuilt, so that's why nobody today really remembers where it was. Uh, but we're pretty sure we know now. One of the ironies about it is uh, across the tracks was Camp McDonald. Camp McDonald was a, well, I can be very specific, was a Georgia militia training center. It was training troops to, to go fight uh, in the Civil War. So there was probably about 2,000 troops bivouacked right across the railroad tracks from where Andrews Raiders stole the train. And they did not know beforehand that Camp McDonald was there. So when they showed up and they're ready to steal the train, all 20 of them, and they look across and there's a sea of tents of, of Georgia militia, they probably thought, what did we get ourselves into? The goal was to steam the train to Chattanooga, burning bridges, tearing up track, cutting telegraph wires along the way. Here's a a line drawing of, of uh, tearing up the track. Didn't work out so well because back then most of the bridges were made out of wood. It had rained like solidly for 48 hours before the raid started. So every time they tried to set one of the bridges on fire, nothing happened. They just spoke. The reason we still know about this today or care is because there was a chase. The conductor, William A. Fuller, and the Western Atlantic Railroad Superintendent of Motive Power, Anthony Murphy, chased the general for all 87 miles. So there was a chase here. First, they started out by foot. They thought a couple Confederate deserters, maybe, had stolen the train to get away from Camp McDonald. So they ran down the track, and they got to Moon Station, and I got a pole car. It's not the kind of hand car you see in the, the Buster Keaton movie. It's just a platform on wheels, and you pull it along like a gondola. And they used that all the way from here down to the, the Etowa River. And then three different locomotives. This is a stained glass window of the Texas here. I think this is still in the, the gift shop, if I remember correctly. Um, the Yona, the William R. Smith, and then the Texas being the most famous one. The goal was to make it all the way up to Chattanooga. They did not make it all the way. They stopped just two miles north of Ringgold, 20 miles from their objective. Because of the heavy rains, they were unable to uh, burn the uh, bridges. By the time they got up to Tunnel Hill, uh, Murphy and Fuller were so close behind them that they were not able to block or blow up the uh, Tunnel Hill Tunnel. So, from a military standpoint, the raid really was a, a failure, almost a complete failure. But in terms of daring do, it was a great achievement. They got two miles uh, on that railroad. What a pain that is. It's not going that railroad out there. Oh, wait, that's what this is about. Um, 
two miles north of, of Ringgold, the train ran out of steam. Andrews was not a military man, even though there was probably only eight or ten people on the pursuing Texas. There were 20 of them, and they were all armed. Andrews said every man for himself. They all took off into the woods. Eventually, they were all captured, some by Georgia militia, some by very angry North Georgia farmers. Uh, eventually, eight of them were hung, including their civilian leader, who, of course, uh, couldn't really say he was a spy because he was a civilian, but the others you could say were spies because they were uh, out of uniform across enemy lines. Eight escaped, made it back to the Union lines. Six were involved in a prisoner exchange. Twenty of the 22 original military members of the raid received the Congressional Medal of Honor. We have one here uh, within the museum. And as a civilian, Andrews did not receive the award. But he wouldn't have known anyway if they had the This is a piece of script, the Western Atlantic Railroad. What script? You ever been to an amusement park or Disneyland where you buy tickets, rolls of tickets to get into the lines, and it's like 10 tickets or something? That's the same idea. You could buy script on the railroad. And uh, the reason I bought this is because it's dated April 1862. So I can't say for sure that this might have written on the general in that faithful. <laughs> 